This episode of Yesterworld is sponsored by Squarespace. Make sure to stay to the end of the video to hear my story about building the all-new Yesterworld website. And go to squarespace.com yesterworld to start your free trial and get 10% off your first purchase. When looking at what aspects make Disney theme park attractions memorable, most would agree the use of visual elements and effects to tell a story is as an important factor as any. But sometimes, what initially starts out as an impressive display of ingenuity falls victim to neglect or unforeseen circumstances and becomes little more than a memory of what once was. In early 1996, Epcot's universe of energy began its transformation into Ellen's Energy Adventure, which would star Ellen DeGeneres and Bill Nye the Science Guy. And while originally planned to debut by the summer, production of the attraction's new filmed portions had fallen behind schedule. And with World of Motion closed, and in the process of becoming Test Track, and Horizons also closed at the time, all but Wonders of Life and Epcot's Future World would be out of commission during the peak summer season. <sighs> Well, I guess we're awake now, huh? So it was decided to briefly reopen Universe of Energy midway through its major update, and the alterations made to the attraction were immediately noticeable, such as the replacement of the pre-show's kinetic mosaic screens in favor of five large static screens, as well as the mirrors hidden behind the curtains used in the finale. <laughs> The primeval diorama portion also featured numerous upgrades and show scene alterations, the biggest of which could be found near the end, as well an elasmosaurus had previously lunched at guests, within a dark cavern surrounded by pteranodons. The water effect had been removed, and the creature had been reprogrammed to attack an animatronic of Ellen DeGeneres, which during the time of this reopening had already been installed, but was hidden behind a large boulder. Once the summer was over, Universe of Energy was again closed, and in September officially reopened as Ellen's Energy Adventure, which included the debut of the new animatronic Ellen DeGeneres, which reportedly cost between one to two million dollars. <laughs> And despite exterior cosmetic updates over the years, for nearly two decades, the attraction went more or less untouched, with many effects losing their luster over the years. And in late August of 2014, after years of the snake-like dinosaur creature having little functionality, fans immediately noticed its disappearance from the attraction. And just weeks later, Ellen's animatronic disappeared as well. And for over six months, despite rumors of having been removed for upgrades, neither animatronic had returned. She's gone, baby. Gone. But in mid-2015, one of the original pteranodons that had been removed during the 1996 overhaul returned to fill in the scene for the missing animatronics, which is how the show scene remained until its closure in August of 2017. And during the attraction's last show on its final day of operation, a rumored planned evacuation gave fans a chance to view the diorama up close and personal, including the infamous show scene where Ellen's animatronic and the Elasmosaurus once resided. Is there a close-up? No? Thank God. Okay. The attraction Pirates of the Caribbean and its many incarnations are no stranger to change, as since its original debut in Disneyland, it has undergone some of the most extensive and drastic alterations of any other ride, both in the U.S. and overseas. Yeah. And in late 2012, previously unseen concept art surfaced of Magic Kingdom's Pirates of the Caribbean, which seemed to feature a new lighthouse background in addition to at least one or more mermaids, fueling rumors that up to three new mermaid animatronics would be installed into the show scene, tying in with the previous year's fourth installment of the successful pirate film franchise. 
Around the same time, another image surfaced in which a blurry photo allegedly snapped by an Imagineer contains what looks to be a temporary stand-in for one of the potential mermaid animatronics. And though one static prop in the form of skeletal remains of a mermaid made it into the show scene, due to budget constraints, it is believed the animatronic idea was scrapped, and what debuted instead was a projection effect of mermaids swimming alongside your boat, and by way of water pumps, would seemingly splash water with their tail fin, with a gentle siren song playing in the background. But my jolly sailor Unfortunately, the effect was often hit or miss, and prone to video glitches, such as alleged instances of Panasonic video errors appearing over water. So in 2015, after years of the effect proving to be a headache, it was turned off for good and uninstalled during a 2015 refurbishment, leaving only the siren song. <laughs> And while the following year saw the addition of a movie prop which was used to carry the mermaid in the film, only time will tell what further changes will be made to the show scene. In the early 1990s, an idea was conceived for an alternate version of MGM Studios' Indiana Jones stunt show to feature young Indiana Jones for the Disneyland Resort. However, this evolved into something much different. That's the most amazing thing I've ever been on. It was fabulous. But like the short-lived Rebel Ice effect, the attraction originally featured a number of ride elements that no longer exist, such as the vortex smoke effect in the Tunnel of Torment, and 60 mph per hour winds in the Mummy Chamber. Even the queue of the attraction originally featured an effect similar to the Spike Room, in which stepping on a raised diamond-shaped floor stone would cause a block to drop down via hydraulics below the stone and pneumatic articulation in the ceiling. However, insurance examiners decided that the raised diamond and lowering of the ceiling would be a safety hazard to guests, so the effect was shut off, with the stone permanently depressed and filled with concrete. The temple offers one of three great gifts, knowledge of future events, immense wealth, or the secret of eternal youth. Though perhaps one of Temple of the Forbidden Eye's most impressive effects occurred immediately after departing from the loading station, in which you entered the Chamber of Destiny, and went down a different path and entered a different show scene each time you rode the attraction, or so it appeared. In reality, there was only one operational track, chamber door, and show scene, with the room itself being a facade that would rotate around the only working chamber entrance, with two fake doors on either side of the real one. This facade was mechanically suspended from the room's actual ceiling, which consisted of two large walls and a proscenium overhead. And as far as the chamber show scene itself, through the use of lighting, fiber optics, scrims, and different audio cues, it could be made to appear as any of the three distinctly themed chambers. And while the facade initially rotated with every new vehicle, over time the mechanism used to rotate the facade required increasingly frequent maintenance to keep operational, with the chamber being set, or sometimes even stuck, to one chamber for weeks or even months at a time. But nearing the end of 2014, depending on the source, either the weight of the facades were beginning to damage the real ceiling from which it was suspended, or the facade room broke off its hinges, and the effects mechanism would have needed to be rebuilt from scratch, so the effect was put out of commission, until the implementation of digital effects took its place the following year, using similar technology as used when replacing the face of Mara two years previously. It's a new ride, Karen! There are about to be one or two things that are gonna be ironed out! In 1963, Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room made its debut at Disneyland and was more than just the park's first fully air-conditioned building, but was the first attraction to use what would quickly become a staple of the Disney theme parks. Ooh, uh, 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 audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. These animatronics were so new and innovative that one was placed outside the attraction to entice guests, known as the Barker Bird. It is showtime now in Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. And while both of the two iterations proved successful, the birds were almost too successful, as park visitors would block the entrance into Adventureland, so the Barker Bird was removed by the late 60s. Buenos dias, senor and senoritas. How do you do down there? Ah! 
Another of the attraction's pre-show elements featured eight tiki gods and goddesses, who would introduce themselves and share their history and aspects of their mythology. My name is Maui. Natives call me the Mighty One. And although silent, there was a ninth tiki character named Udi, the goddess of fishing, who much like the Barker Bird, resided above the attraction's entrance within a large outrigger canoe, with a fish in one hand and gas torch in the other. And for nearly four decades, Udi remained in place. But in the mid-1990s, during the park's infamous Paul Pressler cost-cutting era that had originated with Euro Disney's less than successful debut, Udi's flame, which had previously run day and night was shut off, becoming just one of the victims of the park's controversial cost-cutting and profit-boosting initiatives. But it wasn't just Udi who suffered, as many claimed that the park's aesthetics as a whole were being neglected and improperly maintained. And in January of the year 2000, this way of operation came crashing down, literally, as a pole supporting the A-frame, which also happened to house the tiki goddess, collapsed due to wood rot. So the once iconic thatched roof was removed, with Udi being dumped in a boneyard behind Pirates of the Caribbean, until allegedly, a cast member pried the figure out of its canoe and took it home, leaving the rest to be thrown away. And despite a 2005 refurbishment to restore the exterior of the Tiki Room, Udi did not return as many had hoped. And while tributes exist as collectibles, as well as a figure outside Disney World's Polynesian Resort, it's doubtful the Tiki Goddess will ever return to Disneyland. In April of 1998, Walt Disney World's newest theme park, Animal Kingdom, was open to the public. And while the unrealized land known as Beastly Kingdom had originally been planned to feature the park's major day one e-ticket attraction, in order to tie in and capitalize on Disney's upcoming animated film, the decision was made to instead go with Dinoland USA, which included another, albeit smaller scale, e-ticket attraction called Countdown to Extinction. The attraction used the same ride vehicles and nearly identical truck layout as Disneyland's Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Only in Countdown to Extinction, you would travel back in time to the Cretaceous period to capture an iguanodon before a giant asteroid wipes out everything in existence. And in addition to the many large dinosaur animatronics, you encountered a pterodactyl which flew directly overhead, as well as a group of compsognathuses or compies, which seemed to leap over your vehicle as you raced through the jungle, achieved via a system of pulleys and chains. What are you? Is it better something? <laughs> The ride concluded after having successfully captured the Iguanodon, and much like Indiana Jones, the vehicle suddenly dropped down to avoid the giant asteroid before safely traveling back to the present. And though cut during development, the attraction was to have one final effect, in which through an illusion known as Pepper's Ghost, famously used in the Haunted Mansion, it would appear as if the Iguanodon was actually in your vehicle. It's too fast. No! You're driving too fast. However, it wasn't long after the release of the animated film Dinosaur that it was decided to incorporate more of the film into the park, which included changing the name of the attraction and altering elements of the ride to further tie in with the film. This included the altering of the attraction's music, audio track, and toning down of the vehicle's movements in an effort to make the experience less intense and frightening to draw in younger fans of the film. It was also during this transformation that due to new safety concerns, the swooping pterodactyl was bolted in place and also saw the leaping compies mechanism turned off, as neither had a failsafe to protect guests below in case of mechanical failure. And over the years, these and several of the ride's other effects fell victim to a lack of upkeep priority. And while a 2016 refurbishment restored or digitally replaced them, with rumors of a massive overhaul in its future, the fate of Dinosaur is less than certain. Thank you all so much for watching. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to quickly share my story and experience of using Squarespace. Years back, I hit a point in my editing career where I was ready to take on new projects and clients. But at the time, I had no way of showcasing my work and quickly realized I needed a website. But with no experience in web design or funds to hire someone who did, I eventually came across Squarespace and was immediately impressed by its easy to use interface and large variety variety of templates and customization options to fit any style and portfolio of work. 
mine included. And all these years later, I've never once had to install updates or patches to keep it looking just how I wanted. Flash forward to the present, in which I wanted to make a website for Yesterworld Entertainment. So I again went with Squarespace. And despite being a little rusty on the how-tos, their large collection of tutorial videos enabled me again to create the website I desired, giving me total control over how I want my content to appear. But here's where you come in, as I'd love to hear what sort of things you'd like to see integrated. And if you'd like to give Squarespace a try for yourself, go to squarespace.com yesterworld to start your free trial and get 10% off your first purchase. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and any memories you have to share in the comments below. And if you enjoy my content, subscribe, like, retweet, and share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.